Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be going over the 10 unpickable heroes of Dota 2. So basically what I have going for you here guys today is I got two heroes for each role. We got two for the safe lane, mid lane, off lane, position four and position five. And I'm not only just going to tell you what heroes you should not be picking at all, but I'm going to explain why you should not be picking these heroes. So hopefully you can kind of get a general gist of the meta and also just understand that certain heroes are bad. They just have been nerfed too hard or just don't fit the current state of Dota or they're too hard. Like frankly, that's a big part of it as well. All right, so let's hop into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the GameLeap website. We're gonna teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you wanna become absolutely broken, click the link down below and sign up. The first thing I wanna say is a lot of this video is based off general win rates. I don't just wanna pull stuff out of my butt and say, okay, this hero is terrible, when in reality it wins a huge percentage of the average MMR matches. The lowest win rate carry and one of the lowest win rate heroes in all of Dota is Terrorblade. This hero's win rate is absolutely atrocious and has been bad for quite a bit of time. And honestly, I thought ever since Crimson Guard fell off, this hero would actually see somewhat of a rise, but that hasn't been the case. It seems like the Blademail heart meta that has been prevalent for quite a bit of time is good against Terrorblade, but I think the main thing that holds this hero back is the fact that it's just not good enough for how hard it actually is. Also, not too long ago, the hero was pretty good in the pro meta, and in general, because of the fact that it's good at keeping open the map, and if synergized well within the laning stage is a good laner, it tends to do well at the highest level of Dota. But it's mana problems that it always has, it's difficult map play, it's difficult laning stage. When you put all this together, considering it's also not that good, like even at really high MMR, it's picked very sparingly, it's win rate is terrible. 42%, it's absolutely atrocious, and I would stay away from it. The next hero is Monkey King. I think the problem with Monkey King is, once again, just execution and the payoff for this execution. The upside of Monkey King as per usual is the good laning stage, right? And you might be like, oh, this hero is a good laner against Visage, who, who's, you know, gaining popularity. Lycan, it's pretty good against Beastmaster in lane, right? Why wouldn't it be good? Well, first of all, it's bad against these heroes in the mid game, right? So even if you win the lane, hopefully you win the lane, it still might not do that well. And honestly, I don't even feel like Monkey King is that good of a laner ever since it's changes. So Monkey King's win rate stands at a current 46%. And every time I see this hero in your average 3k MMR game, I just kind of see a hero that doesn't farm that fast, doesn't dominate the game, and struggles to carry in the late game. It's funny because this hero's level 25 timing is pretty strong and honestly a lot of carries can really struggle against it. But something like Wraith King, who even is technically bad against Monkey King because like you use Wukong's command, right? And you, you theoretically get this guy stuck in your Wukong's twice, it just still, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to work. It doesn't seem like you can kill him fast enough because you just don't have enough items. He's gonna out farm you. And unless you're playing this incredible tempo, right? You're, you're dominating your lane. Then you hit the portal. You kill the enemy safe laner. Then you farm the nearby area. The enemy safe laner comes back. You kill them again. Like unless you're making these really top tier plays, I just don't think the hero works. It's not that it can't work at all. As I said, it's a lane dominator, it has its good matchups, but yeah, just the payoff's not there. Just an honorable mention for the safe lane is Drow. I think the lower MMR you go, the better Drow is. It just kind of has similar characteristics of something like Sniper, where, you know, the lower you go, the better, because, I don't know, people just don't get on top of you, they're not quick enough, they don't prioritize it enough, whatever it is, they don't gank you enough. I think that's honestly the big thing. People just forget to gank the Drows and the Snipers, like, these heroes are horrible at defending themselves. Maybe Sniper's okay, but Drow is like, maybe if she has Gust killed, she has something going for her. But like, generally, if you gank this hero, they just get kicked out like that, right? And because they're so bad at fighting back in the early game, you just lose your safe lane tower. And then they have to go hit Ancients, which then takes away the Ancients from your offlaner. And it's just like, I don't know, man. Drow, what she's good at is if she's left alone, is hitting a strong mid game timing, right? When she has Hurricane Pike and her shard, yeah, she feels pretty strong and she just got the multi shot buff, but terrible against Zoo. Well, pretty bad against Zoo. She can delay the game on the high ground maybe, but stall out the timing where Zoo is good and hit the Helm Dom creep. But if you miss these timings, you're just gonna get run over. It takes too much space and doesn't give enough back. All right, next up, getting into the mid lane, the first hero, which I had to include in this list because it is the lowest win rate hero in all of Dota, literally the worst hero in the game, is Batrider. 
which is crazy because this hero always seems to find its place. Even though it's always better at a high level than a low level due to the mechanical difficulty of the hero, its win rate still isn't bottom. Like, usually it's bad. Like, don't get me wrong. Bad Rider tends to be like bottom 20 win rates unless it's like hyper broken, but now it's the worst. It is the only hero below 40% which is insane to see a 39% win rate. I feel bad for the guy, honestly. He needs some sort of buff. But the problem is the reason why Valve can't fix this hero, like it's funny, a lot of the heroes at the bottom of this list are like very dominant pro game heroes. To name a couple, well, Batrider, we're talking about him. Doom, who's gonna be on this list. Ember, who's gonna be on this. Terrorblade, <laughs> Pango, who's not on this list, but honestly could be. These heroes tend to be very good pro game heroes due to the tempo that they provide, the very, like, the terribly the map play, Doom, the flash farming. And Batrider is one of these where if he's too good, he dominates the lane too hard. He tends to do way too much damage. He's really good at farming. But the problem is when you nerf all of his numbers time and time again, and he's mechanically very difficult. And it's like a Leshrac type hero where in order to do damage, you have to be melee range. And that's very hard, right? You have to have very good awareness to make sure you're going in at the right time so you don't get just controlled because you're going melee range. It's very difficult. The numbers aren't good enough to justify it. Uh, you barely see it at a high level either, which is a good sign to never touch Batrider. Then we have Ember Spirit, who I was mentioning, and he's just the worst version of like a lot of other heroes. Just play Kunkka or Primal, or Earth Spirit, just don't play Ember Spirit. The hero's numbers are not good enough. At the end of the day, yeah, it can farm well, it can still slight spam at level seven, but man, this hero has been nerfed so hard. Uh, the, the cast point of the ulti is just so bad compared to what it used to be. The hero lost like regen recently. It's just like, you read the recent changes and you're like, wow, this hero got annihilated. And the problem is it, it was already not a good win rate hero in pubs. And that's why it's just unpickable now, because it falls into the trap. And this is a reoccurring theme of the video, but I want you guys to understand this concept. If a hero is good at a pro level, it tends to get nerfed, right? Because a huge portion of Dota is like the pro scene and people watching the pro scene, right? But the problem is the hero is already bad for your average player due to like, I don't know, a, a conceptual misunderstanding, a mechanical difficulty, which Ember is both, right? The hero's difficult to play. It's so much to manage compared to like Kunkka, where it's like, oh, I'm out of resources, X back to base right? Oh, like, how do I farm? You just right click a bunch of creeps to death. Right? It's like so straightforward. And to be fair, Kunkka tends to be a bit mechanically difficult, but because of how good that hero's mid game is and how good its scaling is ever since they buffed the Ags and he has all these talents, it's just a very straightforward path to scale, which Ember does not have. And talking about that as well as Storm, I mean, this hero is just not good enough. Like, it's just not good enough. The numbers aren't there. It's an honorable mention, but the numbers aren't there. It's too hard. It doesn't have enough mana. It doesn't do enough damage. It's It got nerfed. Like the pull at level one is pathetic. The overload damage got nerfed. It's just not there. Also another item that Storm hates is Blade Mail. Like back in the day, I would always buy when I played Nature's Prophet against Storm, I just buy Blade Mail specifically for him. So he couldn't zip on me and kill me in team fights. Like, all right, next up we have the offlane. The worst hero in the game. I hate this hero. It's Mars. Oh my God. Anytime I see a Mars, I'm like, Ugh. this hero is so bad. It does nothing good. Nothing. Okay. The only thing it's good at is like stopping Lycan from running around. Okay. That's the only redeeming quality about Mars. I'm picking at straws here to help this guy out, to give him something all right the only redeeming quality of mars dope is the arena against lichen all right that's it everything else is terrible like the laning is not that good okay and this hero is known for its laning it has two range creep secures if it wants to play aggressive it can stun and slow if it wants to play defensive it can stun and slow <laughs> if it, and if it wants to play defensive it can secure creeps from a distance like it this hero is theoretically such a good laner and it's still just fine in lane like that's not its problem but like the mid game it's so bad at killing neutrals if you want to kill lane creeps, you have to cast two nukes, which is so much mana. So it has mana problems. It doesn't do that much damage. It's not good at pushing out waves because it has to show to do it. And once again, cast both of its spells and both of its fighting spells to do it. So if you want to nuke a wave and then immediately TP to a fight, you just can't. I don't know. I hate this hero. I hate it. And I used to love Mars because the numbers were there. It was a good laner. It was such a consistent and dominant laner. The arena was like a low enough cooldown and did enough damage where you're like, yeah, I'm gonna get a kill every time I use it. Now, nothing is consistent with this hero. Nothing. All right, getting to the next hero, we got a uh, Doom. You know, it's funny. I don't think Doom is that bad, but I think people just don't know how to play it. Uh, I'm gonna make a video, I think, soon on Doom, even though it's like literally the, the second worst win rate. I actually think that the way to play Doom nowadays is just a less greedy variant, and then it's actually kind of a cool hero that scales. But I think the problem is people go these greedy builds on a hero that already is greedy. Like it's its kit is greedy and then they build greedy and then they they fight and then it's so bad. The ways you play Doom now are either itemized like Blade Mail and your shard. The shard heals you for like 800 or something when you're level 10 or 700. It's insane. It's a really good shard. Uh, and then you buy a Blade Mail. Like just buy this good item and run in. 
like with Scorch Earth and the healing, like, and don't max Devour, like put two points Devour and then max Inferno Blade. If you don't do these things, I think if you don't understand this, like the hero's laning is not that good. It can be really hard to balance this hero, like when to fight and when to farm. And so, yeah, the hero is too hard. And as I said, it suffers the same fate as a lot of these other heroes, which is it's so good in the pro scene when it's good due to its like GPM amp and kind of consistent laning stage. I said it's laning is bad, but like, that's because it's been nerfed a lot. It lost armor, Devourer's been nerfed like 40 times in a row, the cooldown, the gold, uh, I think the level requirements if I'm not mistaken. Even Inferno Blade got nerfed if I'm not mistaken. Like this hero is just, it just suffers the same fate as like Bowrider, unfortunately. All right, getting into the position four roll, I'll spend a bit less time on these heroes because honestly, my analysis of why these heroes are bad is very simple. First of all, Rubik and Snapfire, mechanically too difficult. Okay, Rubik for forever is a hero that I hate. I don't even think it's like, it, it's constantly picked in the pro scene and I don't think for good reason. I think people heavily overvalue Rubik and finally, I think people are coming to the consensus that they overpick Rubik. They just pick it for fun. It's horrible against Zoo. Okay, even though Fade Bolt reduces damage, right, which theoretically makes it decent, I think it's terrible against Zoo, right, which is on the rise. And honestly, ever since they nerfed Fade Bolt to be this like super mid spell, I just haven't liked the hero. Back in the day, Fade Bolt made it impossible to trade. Like there was a period of time where Fade Bolt, I believe, reduced damage by just 20 flat, and then no one could trade with you. It was insane how good Rubik was in the lane. And then I'm like, yeah, it makes sense to pick Rubik. You pick Rubik, the hero's great stats, a, a, an insane level one ability, but now Fade Bolt reduces damage by like 5%. It reduces damage by like five or four or something like that, right? I think it's more like three or four. It's just not good enough. You know, it's literally like a fraction of what it used to be. It's not good enough. They also nerfed the, the E, right? The E not too long ago. I think Lift is just an unreliable ability. Like you need too many skill points on this hero. If you don't have the right abilities to skill or you don't know what to steal, it's just gonna feel trash. Like the upside of this hero is if you can steal like Dragon Slave, you can own the game in the early game. And that stands true, right? Like same thing with Snapfire. Like both of these heroes are terrible against Sue, are hard, like aren't that good in lane, but if they get off to a good start, just do so much damage, right? But they both kind of don't scale. Like Ruby's such a weird one because like for the longest time, I would say like he's one of the better scaling supports, but it just requires so much space and items. And I, I don't feel like he's that good at getting his team off to a good start unless he has the right steals and his laning. It's just not what it used to be. So examples of heroes that just kind of do the job better, I would say are like Muerta, honestly, Hoodwing's been buffed a bunch. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, Lion, even though I'm not a huge fan of Lion, the other more consistent nukers that just do more willow even phoenix to some extent nature's prophet you know these heroes that just are consistent and do a lot and finally for position five we have enchantress just too difficult once again suffers the same fate as doom and bad rider it's too good in the pro scene because of its ability to take towers and dominate the lane when fully understood but yeah you got to know when to skill your impetus when to skill the e these are very important things to understand otherwise the hero will struggle in the lane you are decent against zoo because of untouchable uh and you were really good against zoo when the shard was uh little friends where you could like control units and send it at uh the enemy but now that's the ags and you're just never buying that like you're just never buying that and so yeah you can take over lycan's helm dom creep before he has level two helm dom you have untouchable but uh, once again, it, 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 this hero is very similar to Monkey King in my opinion, which is like in order to farm, you have to know how to truly find the gaps of farm and find lane creeps and know how to play your hero. And then you also have to be able to connect to a ton of early game fights by using the portals and finding the creeps in the right position. And you have to know when to unblock the large camp. It's just, it's like this obscenely difficult hero that requires like a profound level of Dota gameplay to make work. Pros can make that happen and they can make the hero look insane because like they'll be able to farm and scale, but in the early game, they like take all the towers and synergize with their snowball -y Kunga and you know, it looks good. And finally, the last hero is Shadow Demon. The hero's win rate is not very good. Uh, it's horrendous against Zoo. It's dropped 3% win rate as of late. I have a feeling this has a lot to do with the increase in Zoo, even though most players don't play Zoo. So sometimes I say this and I'm like, I don't even think most people play Zoo, but and I know most people play, don't play Zoo, but I think as it gets better and better and like people like me and BSJ and whatever talk about why you should be playing Lycan and how good Lycan is, Shadow Demon will get worse and worse because Lycan against Shadow Demon is like one of the worst matchups in the game. Like Shadow Demon is so bad against Lycan. It's insane. There's nothing redeeming about that matchup except the fact that if you disrupt Lycan, you like get his auras, like you get AC and Vlad's. Do you really want to do that? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, too hard of a hero. It's good when it can dispel stuff, but I'm not even sure there's that much to dispel nowadays. Like, I mean, Glimmer and Force Staff are good, but there's no Crimson Guard, you know? 
The Shiro is like really good with Crimson Guard is good because then you just you just always have an answer to that item, but it's not good against Blade Mail. It's not good against Heart Blade Mail, which I guess is falling off a bit, but only kind of. And it's like good against BKB, I guess, which is like decent in the meta. I don't know. I'm trying to justify this hero, but I just can't. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If there's other heroes you think are absolutely atrocious and you hate having on your team, I would love to hear what you guys have to say in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.